friends, today I will be giving you a stack of books that you can binge in 24 hours. Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I love listicles. You guys know this. I love a good book list and I really, really wanted to put together a book list of books that are so good, so fast paced and so unput downable that you can binge each book in just a day. So today I will be sharing with you a list of 10 books that in my opinion, you can binge in a single day. But before we get into the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Birch Living. Thank you so much to today's sponsor, which is Birch Living Mattress. My favorite thing to do is to spend an entire day just reading. The problem with that is I can never find a place comfortable enough so that I can hang out and read all day long and still be comfortable. But that's all changed thanks to Birch Living Mattresses. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. And Birch Lux takes the comfort, luxury, and safety of the original Birch mattresses to the next level. Crafted with eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. It was also really important for me to choose a birch mattress that is made with organic and natural materials because I tend to feel hot when I sleep, so the organic materials keep me cool and regulate my body temperature. I personally chose the Birch Lux mattress, which is a premium upgrade to their original mattress. And you guys, when they say Lux mattress, they really mean Lux mattress. I have never loved my bed more. And that's saying something because to be honest, I've always been a person who has loved my bed. It literally feels right now like I am on a cloud of marshmallow fluff and I have never been more obsessed. I also love how convenient the setup was. The mattress was actually delivered right to my door and all I had to do was take off the box and it completely set up on its own. And it's also great because if you are looking for a new mattress but you're not entirely sure and you would like to try it out, Birch mattresses actually come with a 100 night sleep trial to try out the mattress for yourself and see exactly how you like it. But if you decide that the mattress is just not for you, you can actually have Birch Living pick it up for free and then get a refund so everything is completely risk free. And so now I can binge read books all day long and stay incredibly comfortable. I love my Birch Lux mattress and I think you will too. So if you would like to try a Birch Living mattress for yourself, you can actually check my description down below and use my code for $400 off of your very first purchase. And every single purchase also comes with two very, very nice pillows as well. So once again, thank you so much to Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. And I highly recommend checking them out. All of the links will be down in my description. And now back to some bingeable books. Well, let's start off books that you can read in 24 hours with Mr. Penimbra's 24 Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. This is a book for people who love books. You're watching a YouTube video on books, so hi, I'm obviously talking about you. This is a book that is following Clay and Clay gets a part-time job at this very mysterious bookstore that is open for 24 hours and it's Mr. Penimbra's Bookstore as the title would suggest. But Clay is noticing that not a lot of people are actually buying the books. Instead, they are checking out rather mysterious and large volumes, and they all seem to be there with very secretive and intriguing reasons. And the more Clay looks into it, the more he realizes that there's a lot more to this bookstore and its secrets than he first thought. This, I think, is the perfect book to binge in 24 hours because first of all, it's very, very short. But second of all, Robin Sloan has this great way of writing contemporary stories that feel very fast paced without necessarily having super, super high stakes. And I feel like if you love books about books and bookstores, you will devour this. The next book I highly recommend that you can binge in just a day is going to be And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And if you're in a reading slump, this book will absolutely kill it. Get it? Because it's a murder mystery where like everyone dies. Yep. Okay, okay, you get it. So I actually read this book in a 24 hour thon that I recently did. So I know that you can definitely binge this in a day because that is how I read it. And it's a book about a group of people who get called to an island and they're all called to this island for different reasons. And then one by one, the guests each start to get murdered. It's one of the smartest books I've ever read. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved all of the characters and it's so fast paced that you will definitely not be able to put it down. 
Okay, next up we had to do a romance. If you're looking for a book that you can binge in a day, I highly recommend checking out either thrillers or romances because they are both so fast paced and so easy to get through. And my personal romance pick for this list is going to be Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I am obsessed with this series. This series is following three different sisters. They are the Brown sisters. We start with Chloe and then we go to Danny and then the last book is Eve. You can read these out of order though and I am recommending this one because I just finished it and it was so incredibly cute. And yes, I did finish this in just under a day. This book is following Eve and Eve is a literal Disney princess, okay? She is like one of the most fun and heartfelt characters I've ever read, but she can't seem to really grow up or so she thinks. And one day she decides to apply to become the chef at this little inn in the Lake Districts. The inn's owner is named Jacob and Jacob and Eve have a very interesting dynamic. I would classify this as like the classic sunshine and grumpy trope, and they are so cute together. They're both so sarcastic and snarky with each other, but they go so well. You will fall in love with both Jacob and Eve. And if you were looking for a romance that's also going to make you laugh, could not recommend this more because this book was absolutely hilarious. Going along the same vein, if you were looking for a book that is absolutely going to make you laugh nonstop. I could not recommend more. Finley Donovan is Killing It by Elle Cosimano. This book is so good. It is an adult mystery and thriller, and I could not put this book down. Yes, you guessed it. I finished this in just under a day, and I feel kind of like it would be impossible to not finish this in a day because it is so incredibly fast paced. You just want to keep reading the entire time. So we're obviously following Finley, and Finley is a newly single mom. She has just been divorced from her husband who uh, <laughs> kind of sucks. And she's also a struggling writer. She goes one day to Panera to discuss like her next book project with her agent and she writes thrillers and mysteries. And so she's talking about how she is trying to kill off one of her characters in her book. However, somebody happens to overhear her conversation at Panera and they leave her a huge amount of money and say, please kill my husband. And so Finley, who is very strapped for cash, now is in this really, really weird predicament where she has to try to figure out if she can become a hit woman. I feel like this would do so well as like a comedy and it reads very cinematic. It reads like a movie. So if you're a person who loves action adventure movies, if you're a person who is looking to laugh a little bit, I could not recommend this more. And I highly recommend pairing it with the audiobook because it made the experience 10 times better. The next recommendation is for all of my fantasy lovers out there who love the cozy vibes of The Hobbit, but aren't necessarily looking for all of the anxiety that comes with a quest for eternal glory. And so if that's you, I highly recommend checking out Legends and Lattes. This is an adult fantasy and it is a self-proclaimed high fantasy, low stakes book. And this is a book that will absolutely steal your heart. We're following Viv, who is an orc, and she is retiring from all of her adventures, basically, right? She's like tired of slaying all of the dragons and looking for the treasure what she wants is a cozy, nice, soft little life where she actually just serves people coffee and has her own coffee shop. And so she opens up her own cafe in this quaint little magical village. And it's just about her starting this really, really cute business and talking to all of these magical people. She meets so many wonderful friends. It's a book for people who genuinely like love all of the camaraderie and friendships that you find in high fantasy with all of like the cozy food and the crackling fires and the cobble stone streets, but it doesn't have a lot of the anxiety that kind of comes sometimes with those high stake fantasy worlds. It is one of the most relaxing reads. So if you're a person who is looking to pick up something that's going to help uplift your mood, it's gonna make you feel hopeful, it's gonna make you feel cozy, and it's also gonna make you feel really, really safe, look no further than Legends and Lattes. Next, if you like the 80s playing Pac-Man and high stakes, Ready Player One is the book for you. This is an adult sci-fi and it has very, very high stakes and it's extremely engaging. So if you're a person who really likes their attention grabbed the entire time you're reading a book, this 
is definitely the book for you. We're following the iconic Wade Watts and Wade Watts lives in the future and in the future things have gone to shit and I can kind of understand why. But in the future, Wade Watts does a lot of things virtually to kind of escape his reality. So he basically joins a virtual reality called the Oasis and you can do anything in the Oasis. You can live in the Oasis, you have your own identity in the Oasis, you can go to school in the Oasis, you can date in the Oasis. And the Oasis was actually created by this very eccentric billionaire who loved 80s video games. And when he passes away, he actually does the scavenger hunt with lots and lots of clues in the Oasis and anybody who can like crack the scavenger hunt and find all of the Easter eggs will then inherit the Oasis. But nobody can actually solve this until Wade Watts comes along. This next book is for the girlies who have a beachy California aesthetic and a killer record collection featuring Elton John and Fleetwood Mac. Your taste is elite and so is this book. Check out Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book takes place in California in the late 60s and 1970s and the aesthetic and vibes of this book, in my opinion, are unparalleled. It's a book that's following Daisy Jones and her joining or teaming up with a band called The Six. And the entire book is told in interviews. So we're hearing from every single member of the band, including Daisy Jones, and it's really painting this mosaic of what life was like back then with the rock and roll and the sex and the drugs and the music. And it's absolutely so unput downable, in my opinion. I paired this with the audiobook, which I highly recommend, and it felt like I was listening to a movie. If you loved Almost Famous, I feel like these are the vibes kind of that really, really go along with it. I don't think you'll be able to put this down if you start this, so I could not recommend this more for books that you can read in a day. Okay, next up, I really wanted to pick something that was going to be nonfiction, so if you're a person who loves to read, but you either want to expand more into memoirs and nonfiction, or you primarily read nonfiction, this book is for you, and that is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I had heard wonderful things about it, but I didn't think that I was going to love it as much as I did, but it's a five out of five stars. Could not recommend it more. We're following Carmen Maria Machado, and she is telling this memoir of a relationship that she had, and the relationship is a queer relationship, and it's a very abusive relationship. The way Carmen Maria Machado like explores her past relationship is unlike any other memoir I've ever read. What she's essentially doing is she is reconstructing her past in the form of a house. And she is telling this very, very chilling and sad memoir of her relationship in a gothic haunted tale because she herself has been haunted by her past, if that makes any sense. And so as the memoir is going on, we see little vignettes and snippets as she is using metaphors and different comparisons so that you can see exactly how she was feeling in the moment. You can see why she fell in love with this person, how this person was making her feel, and it's incredibly haunting. It's very, very sad, but the writing in it was spectacular. I think it's unlike any memoir that I've personally ever read, and it was just so brilliant. The next book is for the girlies with elite taste, okay? And that's going to be Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This is a YA, and I kind of have a hard time categorizing it because it's not really a fantasy. It reads like a contemporary, but with all of these very very whimsical elements to it and little bits of magic. So this book is following Georgina and Georgina belongs to a very, very special family. They live on this little island, I think off the coast of New England, I wanna say. All of the women in her family have magical abilities. For example, her sister can actually float, but the magical abilities are just kind of little bits of whimsy. It's not necessarily like a whole magic system. And you have to get your powers before your 18th birthday in this family or you were born without them. And this this is the summer that Georgina turns 18. And so this is the summer that she is hopefully going to get her powers. It's a very, very magical summer though because a lot of things happen that change her life and change her family's life. It's a very sad book. There are some very, very sweet elements in this. She does find a person who she like gets a crush on and her name is Prue and that's really, really sweet. But we're basically just following her on this island in the summertime as little magical things are happening and as her life is basically being altered by different events. It's kind of hard to explain this book because I obviously don't wanna do spoilers, but I feel like that synopsis does not give it justice. Basically, pick this up if you love beautiful writing, if you love wonderful characters, and if you love books that will break your heart and then stitch it back together. 
This is incredible. Next up, we have a book that warmed the cockles of my heart, and that is Some Kind of Happiness by Claire Legrand. This is a middle grade, and this is one of the best middle grades I've read in a very, very long time. I think it's technically the longest book on this list, but I read this in a day, and it's so fast-paced and so engaging that I know that you can read this in a day as well. This book is following Finley, who is our main character, and Finley is going through a lot, okay? Her parents are basically going through divorce, and she has to stay for the summer with her grandparents while her parents sort of work through their problems. And the only escape that she can kind of get from her world of like anxiety and chaos and not really knowing what's gonna happen next is her pretend world where she basically pretends to be the savior for this enchanted forest kingdom. And what's really, really cool is her cousins all get involved and eventually they all start to make believe that the woods behind her grandparents' house is the real enchanted kingdom in Finley's story. Stories. I love the style of this. Claire Legrand is such an impeccable author. She goes back and forth between how Finley is imagining what's really happening in her life versus what's actually happening in her life. And it has this very like fairy tale and whimsical-esque element that in my opinion is done so beautifully. I also feel like mental health is explored so well for the age range. I feel like it's very accessible. I feel like the conversations in here are really, really important, but also this is just just such a good book. And then finally, the very last book that I would like to recommend to you today is going to be Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. So this is a book for anybody who needs a little bit of hope. It starts off very, very bleak. We are watching civilization as a pandemic unfolds, which I know can hit a little bit close to home. And essentially this pandemic basically wipes out half of humanity. And then afterwards, the survivors have to navigate a world where technology isn't really available anymore and people are very, very sparse. It's a book that's following different groups of people and their interactions. It's scary at times, it's frightening, it's heartbreaking, it's sad, but ultimately I feel like this is the portrayal of humanity and how at the end of the day, we are all looking for a little bit of hope. I also feel like it shows how significant and important art is, and I just, I loved it so much. And I think you guys, that's it. Those are all of the books that you can binge in just 24 hours or a day. I love books that you can read in 24 hours because my favorite thing in the entire world is getting really, really lost in whatever world I'm reading about and forgetting all about the world we currently live in, you know? Sometimes a girl just wants to go to Wonderland. But I think you guys, that's it. Those are all of the books for the list. I'd like to thank today's sponsor once again. Thank you so much to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. All of the links for them will be down in the description. I could not recommend checking them out more. I am obsessed, obsessed with my bed. Like I was already obsessed, but it's like a new level of obsession. And like, I am just living my best life now. And for those of you who have made it to this part of the video, please leave me the calendar emoji because you can read all these in a day. Get it? I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at the time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back you